in this video we would be talking about scalability in microservices so let's start we would first look at a problem statement to understand why we require a scaling of our applications so let's suppose we started building a project with microservices architecture and we developed an application called app1 also we deployed this application to aws ec2 instance and we used a small size of aws ec2 instance now over period of time our application grows up and we would have multiple number of microservices and if you see the size of microservices is varying app 5 is bigger in size in comparison to app 4 app 6 is bigger in size in comparison to app 2 and we are deploying all of these microservices to same aws ec2 instance now this aws ec2 instance has certain limitations of hardware certain amount of cpu utilization certain amount of ram and beyond that it will fail so if more number of microservices would come into picture we would eventually going to reach 100 percent cpu utilization and when we reach 100 percent cpu utilization applications will start to fail in a random manner and you would have no control on that so what is the solution for this how would you control outage in your applications so let's talk about two simple solutions in order to prevent outage now talking about the solution the first thing comes into the mind is increasing the number of servers so what if instead of this single aws ec2 instance we would replace this single aws ec2 instance with more number of aws ec2 instances and we would place both of this aws ec2 instance behind a load balancer another way to resolve this outage is instead of using multiple machines what if we increase the size of machine itself so we will use a bigger aws ec2 instance it could be a medium or it could be large instance size so we talked about two solutions first is increase number of machine with same capacity another is increase capacity of existing machine when we say that we are going to increase number of machine with same capacity it is called horizontal scaling and when we increase capacity of existing machine by putting more ram more cpu capacity it is called vertical scaling so you can say there are two types of scaling one is horizontal scaling one is vertical scaling let's look at both of them in more detail if we talk about horizontal scaling and vertical scaling in case of horizontal scaling we can say that we are putting more number of servers having same capacity so the point to be noted is increasing number of physical servers you would require a load balancer to manage the load effectively you might experience network latency as inter microservice call happens over network now what is meant by inter microservice call it might happen that a request would be spanning over multiple microservices and out of these microservices few of them are placed in different servers so in order to process the request you need to make a call between two different servers and this call would happen over some protocols like http or you can say over internet so you are making a network call 
Similarly, if a particular request is spanning over 5 to 6 microservices, then each call would make some latency in the overall response. And you might feel that processing of that particular request is taking slightly more time. Now, the advantage of horizontal scaling is it is linear with respect to increase in number of users. In case of vertical scaling, we increase the capacity of existing machine by putting more RAM, more CPU capacity to handle the request to handle the applications. So for point to be noted is increasing capacity of existing machine by increasing RAM memory. No network latency in inter microservice calls because all microservices are deployed to same server and instead of inter microservice call happening over network, calls would happen between microservices between two processes or you can say inter process communication is going to happen. Now disadvantage of vertical scaling is there are hardware limitations. You can't go on increasing machine capacity as it involves cost and it is not feasible also that you would make larger and larger and larger servers. If we talk about factors to decide for scaling on a very basic level, we would find that first is how much CPU utilization by individual microservices, how much memory required for individual microservice, how much traffic does individual microservices is going to handle. By term traffic means it would include peak load as well as normal load. If you look at this three basic question, you would find that it would give how much resource a particular microservice require to scale properly. Now this is only for a single microservices to be scaled up. It might happen that scaling in microservices is going to vary from project to project. In case of a particular project, microservices could be independent and rarely inter microservice calls is going to happen. While in case of another project, there could be a hard complex architecture of microservice where for particular request processing, you would be calling multiple microservices and out of those microservices, few would be going to be composite microservices and dependent microservices. So other basic points I would suggest to look for scaling is during a scaling of microservice in peak load, what is the time required for spinning off a new server and how dependent microservices should be scaled. If you look at these five basic points, it would give a basic idea of how scaling is done when you push the application to the productions or for UAT or during the load testing, you can also say. So this is all about scaling in microservice. Stay tuned and subscribe for more upcoming videos.